You won't let the handicap assistance dog in. I don't see a handicap assistance dog. I do not see a vest, sir. He doesn't need a vest. I don't see a vest, sir. He does not. I don't see a vest. In 2010, revised ADA requirements defined a service animal as a dog that has been task trained to mitigate their handler's disability. The ADA was also carefully worded to avoid requirements that would allow a business to discriminate against disabled handlers for using a service dog. Handlers are not required to provide identification, registration, or use specific gear in order to gain access to a business with their service dog. You're asking me to leave because... Or can he, I, he has to be out of the restaurant. It's just a health thing. If the health department were to walk in right now, we could get shut down unless you have papers providing that he has a service dog. Unfortunately, many business owners and the general public remain ignorant of the laws. The result is what service dog handlers call access challenges. Stressful and embarrassing events, these challenges threaten the effectiveness of service dogs to their handlers. Refusing access to a handler on the basis of their use of a service dog is recognized as discrimination in federal court and is grounds for a lawsuit. I'm sorry, this is complete discrimination. I, I mean, this, things like this make my already difficult life very much more difficult. And this is complete discrimination. You're asking me to get out of a restaurant because of my service dog. Yes. We don't allow dogs being in here. You can go ahead and call the police, because I'm not going to leave. An essential part of the problem is a lack of understanding about the various functions of service dogs. The majority of the general public recognizes a service dog as an animal that has been trained to assist a blind person. Dogs assisting those with seizure disorders and hearing implants are often publicly recognized as well. However, the ADA makes no restrictions on the type of disability that a service dog can mitigate. This means that dogs working with people affected by mental illness, traumatic brain injuries, amputations, neurological disorders, and other disabling conditions are all legally recognized as service dogs. However, because of difficulties with access challenges and judgment from the general public, handlers may be hesitant to use a service dog even if the dog has a positive effect on their quality of life. Show me the paperwork for the yes, service dog. So, a service dog. Okay, he's wearing his California Los Angeles uh, registration number on him right there. But okay. you're not supposed to be asking me. You, you can't require... This is not a service dog, sir. Yes, it is. This is my service dog, my properly registered lawful okay. service dog. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> came here with the service dog they recently gave him and says a Starbucks employee basically asked him to prove his disability. The San Diego-based Marine is upset with how she says American Airlines treated her husband and his service dog. A Florida teenager is speaking out after she says a Pensacola police officer asked her and her service dog to leave a fast food restaurant early this morning. of wellness, hesitation to use a service dog due to the reaction from the general public can be devastating to the handler. A 2012 examination of multiple studies of human and animal interactions revealed that the presence of animals has a positive effect on humans by raising oxytocin levels. Oxytocin is often referred to as the love hormone as it is closely associated with the relationship between mother and child and intimacy in couples. 
The presence of heightened levels of oxytocin reduce stress and provide health benefits like regular sleep patterns. Oxytocin might, in this case, also be dubbed the wellness hormone. Because the presence of an animal has been scientifically proven to raise levels of oxytocin, it is logical to deduce that oxytocin is also able to positively affect a person's wellness. Therefore, animals affect a person's wellness. For disabled persons that use a service dog, this effect is multiplied when a service dog also actively mitigates that person's disability. Where a disabled person might suffer in some of the dimensions of wellness, such as the occupational, social, and physical dimensions, a service dog is capable of improving those dimensions. A handler struggling with occupational wellness because of a disability might benefit from the presence of a service dog. Perhaps work creates stress that triggers their disability. By mitigating the symptoms of that disability, the service dog is able to then improve that area of wellness for the handler. If a handler struggles with a physical disability, they may gain independence with a service dog. Instead of relying on friends and family members for aid, a physically disabled person with a service dog will be able to rely on their dog for assistance. This can have an extraordinarily positive effect on the handler's physical wellness. Since dogs need exercise, there is an added benefit of motivation for the handler to get outdoors with their dog. Despite the threat of negative public perception and access challenges, the use of a service dog should be viewed as extraordinarily beneficial to a disabled handler. It is essential that both handlers and business owners know their rights in order to create a peaceful and stress-free experience for everyone involved.